Hey, hi, Sam. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, joining this meeting. And uh, this is the data engineering first round of the interview. And let me introduce myself. So I am Ankur. Currently, I'm having near to 3.5 years of experience and working in Walmart as a data engineer three. And here we will be conducting one mock interview. Uh, this is a typical first round of data engineering interview, which will consist of basic uh, basic uh, big data questions and SQLs. And we will be checking your, uh, your skills and the logical thinking skills uh, using data structure and algorithms. And we will be trying to keep all very simple questions. And I am not looking for the exact solution. I will be looking through your approach. Okay. So without wasting time, let's, uh, can you give me a brief intro about yourself and about your work? So basically I am graduated from NFIT last year. 2021, okay. And I am working as a data engineer for last uh, 1.9 uh, years. Like I have started work, uh, I have basically started working in uh, Ecom Express as a data engineer in Jan 2021 as an intern. And till June, I was working there as an intern, and after that, I received a full time mm -hmm. offer. So, like in those years, uh, I worked on building a real time data lake using like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Devizium and Spark mm -hmm. Streaming. Apart from that, uh, I worked on like automating uh, some business reports and building other data pipelines. Mm -hmm. So, let's go more uh, technical into your project. Will you like to explain the flow of? Uh, one of your project, one of your data uh, data pipeline. I do have your resume with me, so I can see that you have worked extensively on Kafka, Hive, uh, Spark, and AWS Cloud Technology. Okay, so can you just explain mm. me one of your project in a detailed way? The, when I say detailed way, it means that you have to explain me some from where you were extracting data, how you were trying to ex uh, uh, what, what which all technology that you were using to extract data. Uh, are there any are there any multiple upstreams or downstream applications involved with your uh, data pipelines? And if you are uh, trying to extract data, what, all the methodology uh, that you are using for extracting. So, and the second thing that uh, uh, what all different zones you were using, like in big data pipelines, we do have raw zones, consumption zone, clean zones, and we do write multiple uh, business transformations. So, which all technology you were using for doing the transformations, and how you were trying to load the data. So just explain me your project in extensive uh, technical manner that how that big data pipeline was designed and where you were involved mostly and what all what you, you were doing. Do you like to explain me that? Yeah, so uh, like as I talked about the uh, real, uh, building a real time mm -hmm. data lake. So basically I worked it on from scratch, like from start to end I worked mm -hmm. on it. Uh, since in Ecom we have a small uh, data mm -hmm. engineering team. And um, uh, basically, uh, my source of data was MySQL okay. database. And uh, basically, all the uh, transactions that are happening on the database uh, are getting stored in a okay. build logs at a mm -hmm. row level. So by row level, what I mean, like if you update a record, so in the build log, there would be a before of like before value of that particular uh, record and the after value of that particular mm -hmm. record. Uh, so uh, basically we read that bill log using Debezium, mm -hmm. which is our open source uh, tech. And um, then I use a Kafka mm -hmm. connector, which like uh, mistakes what Debezium reads and uh, basically transfer that message to my Kafka okay. cluster. Which is uh, basically a MSK cluster. Uh, MSK is basically a Kafka cluster managed by AWS. It's a AWS mm -hmm. service. And uh, after that, I use a Spark structure okay. streaming. So basically, in that, what I do, I launch an EMR on that. I run a Spark streaming job where I uh, subscribe. Like uh, what I did is uh, like I made a separate topic for each. Okay. So like, let, let's suppose if I am uh, streaming 40 mm -hmm. tables, so there would be 40 topics for each uh, uh, table in my topic okay. list. So I subscribe to these topics and uh, after subscribing, I basically do the transformations. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, uh, let's, so not go to, let's not go the, to transformations uh, just quickly. Let's try to understand your initial phase. So you are saying that uh, you for you, the source was MySQL where the transactional data was happening. 
then you have used on open source uh, which uh, which was uh, producer for you and you were trying to consume using the kafka right yes, uh, yes. and then after that you have used uh, structure streaming and you are saying that you have opened 40 uh, let's suppose you are having 40 tables so you have subscribed to 40 kafka tokens so this was the basic structure uh, of your extraction part of your data pipeline right okay so yeah. i have some questions there uh, what are what is the typical volume of data you were reserve, uh, receiving uh, your, um, while you were dealing with this extractions part so uh, basically it depends uh, on from table okay. to table like one of the table was having a lot of around 10 billion mm-hmm. day uh, in the 10 billion it consists of inserts and updates okay. both and uh, others were having like um, uh, maybe less like 1 billion or some kind of that so so it depend from table to table like what is the insert okay. and update so okay. thing on like day and, to day uh, when you are spinning your emr clusters so how that is spinning was happening is it ad hoc basis or your emr was spinning whole day or how you are trying to do that how you are trying to uh, run your clusters or you were try- uh, killing your clusters after your jobs gets over how you are managing that so i can see that your kafka is sending you the data continuously like right? this is the uh, real time streaming so there are multiple complexity involved when we we are working with the real time streaming because as you mentioned that you have open 40 topics uh, because you were having 40 tables and now you are t- trying to produce the data i just wanted to understand that how you were spinning that emr clusters uh, will you please explain me that yeah so basically um first during our like building project so we have like basically um standardized like uh, what uh, architecture we required for each particular table we divided tables in mm-hmm. some batches like uh, they are, they are, like i mentioned like one of the tables was having 10 billion of data mm-hmm. so uh, we have kept a separate emr cluster mm-hmm. for it and like some of the tables which have the less mm-hmm. data so uh we uh, group them in a batch uh, and like uh, we really we group them and we have a separate okay, emr I, for that uh, uh, got and, that this is you are using different separate emr i am more interested in spinning part when you were owning that uh, emr yeah. And, oh, yeah i yeah okay. i'm coming to that so basically uh, once we have standardized so we write uh, we use the uh, mm-hmm. airflow uh, so to spin the mm-hmm. emrs and basically submit our spark job mm-hmm. on it and uh, like for now like mm-hmm. uh, for now uh, this is emr that are 24/7 okay means you are mostly are, that's the uh, spinning is 24/7 this is the real time you are you are getting data and you are trying to consume it okay but in but in coming feature what we were looking for over is yeah basically uh, for the 24/7 is spinning also we shut down a emr uh, like we spin emr for only 24 hours after 24 hours we basically stop streaming we terminate that emr and we will uh, basically spin a new emr and we will start the stream of that uh, okay. table like which emr was okay. terminated like that suppose five tables were, were streaming on that emr same five tables were, were streaming on okay. a new cool. emr and uh, let me just uh, um, try to understand so while you were spinning new emr so sometimes the emr is spinning might take 10 minute 5 to 10 minute to just to spin up it depend upon the your right. cpu machine right. so while you are uh, spinning that emr how you were managing the data which was coming from the kafka uh, there can be lag or uh, you can lose some how you are retaining the data in the kafka can you explain me that yeah so by default uh, kafka has a retention of 7 days okay. okay and like currently we had set it up to 5 mm-hmm. days and uh, on yeah so when like we for terminating a emr we have to stop the streaming job first so that it my stream is stopped gradually i don't bear some mm-hmm. data loss mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. like that uh, and like while my new emr still it would take 5 mm-hmm. to 10 minutes so yeah there will be a lag of like 20 mm-hmm. minutes at the time of mm-hmm. stopping it uh, but uh, we are looking at like okay so 20 minutes is a lag but it can be uh, like we if we uh, basically on the uh, mm-hmm. emr side if we go so this lag 
our streaming job can mm-hmm. cover okay cool because basically in the expected streaming it restored the options yeah, and the right. checkpoint there are checkpoints okay. uh, let's go to this checkpointing things can you explain me what does checkpointing means uh, in a world of apache spark or big data world yeah so uh, like what i explained is checkpointing is uh, like uh, it is it restores tell where it mm-hmm. has read it and in uh, whether it is committed successfully mm-hmm. or not Mm. So this is about like checkpointing. What I had uh, like experience. So what is so you explain me? So what is the difference between uh, processing the data and doing the checkpointing? Then is there any difference? So, so you explain me. Uh, I am feeling like these are same. Is this same or different? And why checkpointing is more than in uh, done uh, when we are uh, doing streaming types of jobs and it's very much less used in when we are creating batch pipeline of job batch pipelines or something. so can you explain me so uh, i just wanted to understand that do you know the difference between checkpointing and persisting sort the caching the data do you have some idea about that so uh, like what uh, i'm not getting what you mean by like persisting the data like what, so uh, you mean by like uh, once we store the data and after that we uh, do the like check on okay like this point so we have that so while you are doing the checkpointing where the data get stores is it some uh, hard disk or yes. some some place or where is that Okay, okay, so this data is stored in a S. We we were showing the checkpoint data in a S okay. location. Okay, right. So right, so you are loading the data into some some distributors related to SDFS, S3, or ah, uh, yes. uh, so. Yeah. But there is one concept to persist or cast. Ah, uh, DM, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, using right. that we can we do have multiple things. Ah, uh, we can store in the memory or some part in the uh, disk. we can serialize it and then store it we can deserialize and then it's done store it and it uh, but there are other differences too uh, with respect to checkpointing and the caching and persisting but let's not go go there okay so uh, let's uh, before uh, moving that uh, as explain do you know the meaning of serialization okay uh, not okay quite. okay not a problem let's uh, i think uh, we are uh, good with the extract part extract layer and uh, have you given some name to the your landing zones like there is some uh, there can, can be some raw zone clean zones and consumption zones so i am more interested in that so while you are explaining your answer try to give me the descriptions of the zones so for now i got your extractor extraction design uh, cool for me uh, there is some source mysql then you are having open source which load data in kafka and then you use this part uh, structure as streaming cool let's go to the transformations can you just explain me which all transformations which all business transformations in a brief way you were doing yeah so basically like all the raw zone like all the three zones mm-hmm. that you have talked uh, were present in our uh, streaming mm-hmm. script so my raw zone was the extraction layer where i am like subscribing mm-hmm. to the topic and like uh, getting uh, the topic messages into mm-hmm. our data frame and uh, then comes my transformation mm-hmm. zone so in the raw zone what i have mm-hmm. the messages like mm-hmm. json messages where i have the before part where and mm-hmm. the after part so now i have to convert it into okay. a data frame right and like if i say in case of insert mm-hmm. and update i am more interested in the after part because uh, see in the case of insert my before mm-hmm. would have null and in the update one after Since it contains the value of mm-hmm. all columns, like uh, after uh, any update, uh, mm-hmm. whatever the mm-hmm. record we updated, that particular record, all column values have been okay. in after. So I, I am, I am interested in mm-hmm. that after part, right? So we have, we were transform, we were creating the new data frame of uh, uh, where we are, uh, like we in case of inserts and updates, we are uh, keeping the mm-hmm. after part. by providing the schema we were just uh, basically converting json mm-hmm. to a data frame so we have all the all the uh, mm-hmm. like reports and in case of deletes i am interested in the before part because after would yeah, have right. for that before right so uh, once these two data frames uh, i made like in certain updates one and the delete one i just joined mm-hmm. both of them and uh, after that there are some like 
business transformations uh, not exactly business transformations i would say it is it is more of a cleaning my data because uh, because basically what happens is uh, debezium by default converts the uh, date time for column just one minute i think my cook has come just give me one minute please okay sorry uh, let's start okay uh, so you were talking about the transform you were saying that we, you were not applying the some very advanced transformations it's like cleaning your uh, data from cleaning your data okay yes uh, so ba- ba- basically uh, like uh, there uh, i had like i mentioned so uh, there with my own it default it convert all the date time time stamp date columns into the mm-hmm. begin so uh, when it converts to them epoch it was converting mm-hmm. them now so when we see the kafka messages we found out that uh, the conversion mm-hmm. was wrong so we have to basically do the correct okay. conversion so uh, that type of transformations we took care of mm-hmm. in our script apart from that uh, like uh, the heavy mm-hmm. tables like uh, heavy table code i say like uh, 200 gb tables or that kind of table we are partitioning mm-hmm. that so for that we have written a transformation logic where we are building up column mm-hmm. and we, you were basically and using spark data frames not data sets or rdd assets right so you were using no, structure is no, telling itself okay cool Cool, yes. cool. Uh, so mm-hmm. after the, after the from after my final data frame, uh, like became uh, after making my final data frame, we were just uh, basically ingesting it to mm-hmm. S three in the form of like tables okay. using hoodie. So we are using uh, Apache hoodie to basically load the data in the form mm-hmm. of tables. Uh, okay, S3. cool, cool. uh okay let's uh, so the just explain me your sync process not means the apache hoodie part so while you are writing your data uh, uh are you using any partitioning buffeting or any type of optimization as such yeah so the, the, i have this mentioned that we are doing partitioning on that okay i am good with your big data questions just give me one minute uh will we start with your sql and the tsa now just give me one minute okay okay yeah, yeah. just one minute huh? my cook has come so that's why i'm taking some some time okay uh, but i'm i'm good with your big data knowledge i think you are very much uh, concise with what you have done and uh, you explain your project very uh, beautifully uh we uh let's uh, let's try to uh, check your sqls and the basic uh, time permits then we will be going for the uh, what you call it uh, dsa questions otherwise uh, we will stick with the more sql okay cool uh, okay. can you just share your screens and show me uh, open any editor like sublime vs code or notepad any editor is fine for me okay uh let's see uh is my uh, skin visible uh, it is taking some time but i think yeah one minute yeah i can see your screens now uh just brighten the uh, just increase your brightness little bit okay uh, yeah cool cool uh, cool it not 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 bad uh, i can take the uh, i can work with this okay uh, i'm sending some questions to you uh, in your mail uh, for this particular uh, chat box that we are using does not support good formatting so i'm sending the questions and i will make you understand about your questions so you can just open your mail and you can see the questions there uh, yes just refresh try to refresh it
okay and uh, till this uh, 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 if your mail come i can explain your course explain the questions okay so uh, mm-hmm. in this particular problem we are having two tables one is customer and the product it's a very typical table uh, very much used in industry so we are having two tables customer and product okay and uh, i think mail uh, have you got the mail uh i think so okay so we are have uh, you can just uh, just copy copy paste and put it in later i think then it will be much easier yeah uh go down i think it's copied yeah you can paste it in uh, in your editor perfect okay uh so let's try to understand this question so we are having two tables customer and product customer has two column customer id and product key product has one column product key and that is the primary key of that particular product and these two tables are connected using product key as the product key is the foreign key uh, to the product table we have to write one sql query to report the customer ids from customer table that bought all product in product table so it's like uh, you want so let's suppose we are having a um, very rich customer okay and he is going to uh, some department which has 100 products and uh, he is going to that department and uh, just buying all the product so we want that type of customer result in our end result or that type of customer id okay the customer id of that particular customer so uh, have you got this questions or shall i shall i make you understand little more uh no i got the uh, question and i've also created one uh example for you uh, i've been say, i'm sending to you but uh, you can uh, uh, proceed a bit before that itself and uh, let me clarify that don't think anything silently think it loud whatever you are thinking just think it loud or try to say something so i got your thought process so i'm again saying i'm not looking for your end result i am looking for your uh, what call your your approach okay okay and i've give you uh, send you one uh, examples also so can you check your mail oh uh, yeah click on yeah yeah Okay. Can you look into the example and ex- uh, just let me know if you are not getting that example. uh i got the example uh okay what i will uh, i am thinking उड you i should get your thought process okay yeah uh, actually i uh, basically i am thinking of uh, join mm-hmm. joining this two mm-hmm. tables on the like this of product mm-hmm. key and uh, uh basically then after then um 
uh, we can have a okay. Uh, uh, we uh, want to have another column here which have a like let's account of that and um, then we just um, Can mm. I turn in this to if I found that distinct product key and put in the customer ID? So I have the customer as one, two, three, something, two, something. I think what I uh, like what I'm thinking is uh, uh, like can uh, we can do this right? Like we can uh, set a variable, let's say uh, count of product table, like unique, uh, uh, like all the product mm -hmm. keys. So uh, I kept that count in some uh, va mm -hmm. variable, and then I just uh, basically uh, on the customer table I write a query like where I will uh, basically count the distinct product mm -hmm. key and uh, keep the customer id and i will group by customer id and in the where clause i will not a where clause in the having clause i will uh, basically have that count equal to this particular uh, count okay and in so, instead of uh, creating that, variables we can use subquery right or cg yeah yeah we can use that okay, can, can you can write the query for me uh yeah sure uh, one minute, just enter uh, multiple times so uh, the, whatever you are writing becomes in the middle, comes into middle. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it is still oh, in the end, sorry. Uh, after line, yeah. After the line, you enter the uh, enter. After from. Okay. After from. Okay. Yeah, keep keep entering. Keep for 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 five yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you now can I can uh, now it is more visible to yeah, write your query there. Write your query in the there okay. select yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, table was customer right. Uh, so, um, I think this will work. This will give me the, all the customer mm -hmm. IDs. I think this is correct. Can you explain me uh, your thought process of using distinct? Why it is necessary to use distinct in your count uh, thing? Okay, so like I can have like uh, 
I use this thing because I can have a case now like uh, where I have uh, a same customer buying same product mm-hmm. two times. So, like in the above case, let's say uh, my customer two has bought the product six two times, and I have a two entry for okay. that. So, uh, if I just uh, uh, count all the product mm-hmm. E's, so my one would have two, two would have two, and three would have also have two. Okay. And uh, since my product table count is also two, so my output would uh, be like one, two, three. But uh, my output should be one and three because uh, they have buy all the products which is five and six, but two has only bought the products mm-hmm. since. But that is two. Okay. Times. Cool. So to eliminate that, I have used the distinct keyword. Cool. So yeah, I'm good with this uh, your approach. Uh, let's move to the next person. Uh, I've sent you one more person mm-hmm. for you. Uh, just check your mail. Yes. Uh, it is taking some time. Uh, yeah, got it. Just copy that uh, content and put it in your in your supply. Yeah, it, yeah. Paste it in your supply. Okay. Now let me explain you this question. Or uh, will you please read it loud and you explain the questions to me? I think that will be much better way. Just read it. Read the question loud. Okay. Okay. So like we have a table product which have three mm-hmm. columns: product ID, product name, and the unit mm-hmm. price. And uh, product ID is basically the primary key of this mm-hmm. table, and each row of this table basically indicates the name and price of each product. And then we have a sales table where I have the seller ID, product ID, product ID. I think it is a foreign key for this yes. table. And uh, then there we have the buyer ID, sale date, quantity, and price. Uh, so. Okay, so this table doesn't have any primary key. No. Product ID and each of the table contains. Okay, so basically, uh, if we make a sale, we have a one seller ID, the person who have sell that item, and the buyer ID is the person who have yes. bought. Yes. And then we have the sale date, quantity, and the price. So, uh, so we have write a simple query that support the buyer who have bought a uh, S eight but not iPhone. It's like uh, no, the, uh, let me just uh, read it loud. It's like there will be some buyer who will buy the uh, asset mobile, right? Uh, the Samsung asset, but right. he or she will not buy iPhone. So we have to find those type of buyer. So it may happen that someone might buy who is very rich, uh, and uh, they can buy asset and iPhone both both the tables. So we can discard that. Uh, we only want those type of uh, buy, buyer who have bought asset but not iPhone. You are getting? Yes, I got perfect. Uh, let's try to uh, please try uh, please try to solve it. Yeah, so uh, basically, what I have to do is uh, uh, okay. uh so if I join it with the product table, I will get uh, like all uh, the buyers who have bought as whatever they have bought, like as it or as gone, and anything else. Uh, that I've got, and if I put uh, uh, like this, 
Yes, but I mean, should not be equal to I on upper name. So let's see it and not I phone. So if I press to the product name equal to equal to I said, I will got all the IDs and Okay, and I have to the thing with the icon ID. I have to just like that. This ID should not be put to that. I am again saying if you are thinking something, try to break the solutions and think it loud. If you are thinking about some joints, then say it loud. So, otherwise, I'll... yeah, so yeah, so basically, what I am thinking like, I joined the sales and product mm -hmm. table. Uh, so, like, again, after joining, I get against each buyer what the product he, has, he or she has bought, like I said before, I bought mm -hmm. whatever it is, right. And uh, now uh, this become my main okay, cool. And uh, now I want to like filter on it, like uh, the on the like uh, on, I have to just written all the buyers mm -hmm. that have bought all the asset and not the okay. icon. So for that, what exactly I am thinking is like uh, if I get uh, the like uh, buyer IDs that. Uh, that uh, very who have bought the S8, and then I uh, give a check that this ID should not be equal to the buyer IDs who have bought the iPod. Mm -hmm. So I got all the uh, buyer ID, uh, basically all the buyer mm -hmm. IDs that uh, uh, that have only bought the S8. Okay, uh, let's try to break the system. So uh, will you please create main table you know, for me? Let's try to create the first right step. Let's create to let's try to create one main table. Then we will proceed. Okay. Cool. So, so are you are you using any sub query for creating main table or using CT? Uh, you can use CT right for creating the main tables or something like that. Uh, yeah. So basically, it would be a. CT. Yeah. Let's try to name the CT. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't remember the syntax, I can let you know. We can write with name of the city like uh, ABC or CTE as, and then we can write our query uh, in the inside the packet. Yes. Okay. Uh, with, uh, um, Let's call it main table. Main table. And start our brackets, yes, and we can write our query there. Uh, so, uh, from the sale table, I would require to be fired. Okay, this is the uh, main oh. table for you. Okay, uh, I have one. I have one question. Yeah, no. Why you have applied left join, not other join like inner or right? What is the thought process of you of uh, of applying left join? Okay, so basically, uh, see, we want all the sales table mm -hmm. data. 
and on the on that we want like uh, the product label mm-hmm. data if i go with uh, uh, like in kind of a mm-hmm. inner join um, maybe in this case i think inner join would also mm-hmm. work because uh, what lab would do it's like if uh, we have a uh, some product id in the sales mm-hmm. table that is not mm-hmm. present in the product table we have that okay, record cool. we would right. have that record mm-hmm. in our result yeah i was looking for this yeah, reset itself yeah you you have the right understanding about uh, using the correct joints yeah we can move ahead we can move ahead so our main table is ready now what next yeah so uh, basically uh, uh, i am uh, okay. so i now from this i have to like in a where clause i have to use a sub query of this main mm-hmm. table like uh, i select all the uh, buyer mm-hmm. ids where my product name is s8 mm-hmm. and in that where clause i will put a clause like where my buyer id uh, is not in uh, basically in that i give a mm-hmm. sub query where uh, i would select all the buyer id that i have bought cool now this looks good to me can you write the query yes Okay. Hmm. Mm. Okay, I got it. You are correct. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I got your SQL knowledge. Uh, the uh, and it's good. Uh, we are having very less times. So we will not be able to solve any uh, CP or DSA problem. but let's try to be a uh, little theoretical and let's try to um, judge you or check you i should not say judge you yeah so can you just let me know uh, which all data structure you are most familiar with and uh, which all data structure that you know okay uh, so like i am familiar with arrays mm-hmm. this uh Like in Java, I will use the mm-hmm. list hash mm-hmm. tables, stack. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, let's try to uh, pictureize one solution. So let's suppose we are have uh, we are free to choose one data structure. Okay. And uh, let's suppose we okay. are having lakhs of uh, numbers uh, in one list or array. Lakhs of number in some okay. hash set or set, whatever you call. Lakhs of number in a dictionary or hash map. and the dictionary uh, the number will be a, the key will be the number and the value will be the uh, okay. value will be a, a, what you call the index or the value will be the list of index where all the value uh, that particular key uh, number lie so let me know okay. if i try to search if you try to write any search algorithms or try to search some number on which data structure the searching will be most fast okay uh so uh, just uh, let's try to make it more simpler uh what is the um, what you call best searching algorithm that you can write on an in on array or list and what is the order of that okay so uh, like i can uh, basically write uh, um my sort or uh, like to sort which is uh, Uh, which have a time complexity of okay. n log n. Okay. So you done the sorting then? What after that? I'm looking for searching, not okay. sorting. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, searching for that it is like uh, we 
uh, there are two types of search like uh, we can do with like binary search which are, uh, which works only on mm-hmm. sorted mm-hmm. arrays like its complexity is log n and the other is like uh, we have to iterate all over the array and search mm-hmm. for the element which has a time complexity of cool. n uh, what is the time complexity of searching any element in set okay so in set uh, uh, i think it cool. is n and then what will be the time complexity of searching any key in hash map in hash map uh, it would be n why n means you have to search one key i'm again repeating hash map you understand right that's the sort of dictionary in python or when you are working with java then yes. you are, then we have to search the uh, that particular key just think if you have to only search that particular key will that take any iterations or it can happens before that Yeah, uh, like I, uh, I uh, like I've used the built-in function, so uh, uh, I'm not sure about the time complexity that they follow. But what I'm thinking is like what I by applied and is like we I can get all the keys in the but form. But why of, to get like, the key? Uh, you can search using directly. It's order of one. Okay, not a problem. Uh, we are good with your uh, data engineering interview. uh i think uh, you explain your uh, pipeline in a very beautiful way and you try to explain all the concepts and then your sql you were able to solve both the questions and the dsa was also good so i am good with the interview uh thank you for your time uh hope for the best uh, good luck thank you thank you